Hello and welcome to this week's video. I'm MJ and today I show you how I made my 1898 bed under petticoat. I've used a magazine with the instruction on how to make this petticoat. They describe it in the magazine as a red and golden striped silk petticoat, but they also said that you can use any other fabric like cotton or linen if you want to, or even wool for um, colder weather. I've chosen to use um, linen and cotton. I've pre-washed my fabrics and I have here this Turkish blue um, greenish uh, linen that I quite like. And I've got these two um, printed cottons and they match in the color scheme of the linen and they also quite, ma quite nicely match together. And I've got one meter of those each and I've got two meter of the linen and I hope it's enough. The first step that I was, was going to um, draft out the pattern. So in the magazine they gave you a drawing with all the basic uh, measurements but there was no measurements on how, how wide or how deep the darts on the petticoats were so I've estimated them. Um, I, look, I, I looked at the proportions on the drawing and on my pattern pieces are quite similar and I will show you now the process of drafting this petticoat. So here you can see the draft instructions that I found on online. This is the skirt that I'm going to make and here are the pattern pieces. I just um, enlarged the pieces but there was a problem. I mean they give you most of the uh, measurements but not, not all of them. So I just kind of guessed some of them, but it worked out fine in the end. I have here all my pattern pieces and my fabrics. So there are the four main pieces and the waistband are still missing but those are easy rectangles to cut so I didn't bother to make an actual pattern so um, this one is for the pieces A, B and C and I hope that I can cut piece D out of this fabric I have only one meter twice so that I can use this fabric for the waistband and the ruffles. If I don't have enough of this fabric for this is also meter. If I don't have enough of this fabric for um, the PSD, which is quite large, it's like 68 by 99 centimeters or something like this, um, I will cut it out of this fabric and then I will make. I don't know. Then I will see how I make the rest of the petticoat in which colors and which way. So let's get to this. Here you can see that I laid the fabric on the floor and laid my pattern pieces on top, but I made a really, really bad mistake and I only had some bits left. I just forgot that I have to mirror the pieces and just was happy that I could fit them at all, but I fixed it with many, many seams. Then I go to the linen fabric and I cut out all the pieces on the linen fabric. I mean the linen fabric was quite nice to work with because the chalk really left durable lines that were quite easy to see but I had nearly nothing left from this fabric either. Then I cut it out and after cutting out I prepared my sewing machine the first thing that I was going to do was to finish all the darts in different parts of the um, petticoat. When you sew darts, it's really really important to start at the bigger part and sew towards the end. Don't um, sew forwards and backwards to secure at that point at the end, but instead make a knot, or even better a double knot, and then you will get nice starts. Or at least it's the method that works for me the best. Then I sewed all 
border pens together and here again I'm just um, following the chuck line. I wasn't very careful following the lines because one millimeter here or there isn't that important when dealing with a petticoat. Yeah, it was quite a fast process, an easy process and I quite enjoyed it. I felt down the seams by hand. I could have gone and sewed this with the sewing machine but I quite enjoy sewing at, in the evening after a long work day so I just pinned it and then sewed it um, in front of Netflix. I think or just watching some YouTube videos I don't know but I quite enjoy it doing this and it's really really quick and it leaves a neat finish on the other side if you do that and you just don't see any visible seam line seam lines so yeah that's why I quite like to hand fill all my seams if I have them for that so here you can see the finished seam then I made a small placket to go in the opening I just cut on a, a rectangle flipped it inside out and then I backstitched it onto the skirt after ironing of course. The next step was to sew the, the bottom part of the petticoat and I sew the, those two long flounces along the short edges and bind them and then I pinned the two pieces together, the, uh, the linen one and the cotton one. I did this because when you have a much more volume in the skirt at the bottom um, and it really gives the skirt a nice look and also so you if you have the fabric it's quite nice so you don't have tiny leftovers or so just so I just used also the linen and I sewed along the edges. I ironed it it's very very important to iron your seams because they will look much 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 better if you iron during sewing if I mean, you can iron your clothes and you should iron your clothes after you're finished. But the thing is, when you sew and you iron, you get a much neater finish. Even if you sew, if you, if you, even if you iron the living heck out of, the, out of it at the end. So keep that in mind. I really, 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 really think you should do that. Then I attached it to the skirt and went on with the waistband. The waistband is just measured to size and cut a long strip of cotton and I had to gather a little bit of the skirt to fit in the waistband and this is also how you adjust the size of the skirt so it's a one size and you just have to gather more or less of the skirt and after that I made um, seven or eight meter of ruffles and one edge is rough is co also corded to help the ruffle stick out even more I just used a credit card to stuff all the cord neatly into the corner and then I, then I ruffled the ruffle of course and sewed it on. Last step was to French seam the back of the skirt closed because I left that open for ease of working. Then I put my corset on, my under petticoat and my petticoat and here you can see that. I quite like how the finished skirt turned out. I mean, it's not the most, vo it does not give the most volume, but um, if you wear it under a skirt that's very, very floppy as uh, this white and purplish one, it's it's making a huge difference. The skirt isn't always catching between my legs anymore, and it just sticks out, out very nice, and I quite like the result. So, um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, or even better, leave me a comment next time. Thanks for watching and bye!